IP ratings are not waterproof ratings. They are water resistance ratings. Don't let waterproof terminology mislead you. Waterproof would suggest that you could ride through this, what you're seeing in my backyard right now, flooding here in Northern California. This is not advised. Regardless, if you have the top of the IP rating spectrum at IP68, still not advised, look at the links below, to know if your use scenario is gonna agree with those IP ratings of the product you're buying, if that is important to you. So I'm gonna show you some things you can do to help your PEV do a little better than its rating towards the end of this video. Hopefully right away you can just see that having an overall IP rating is probably not actually that helpful because you have all these parts, right? You got display, both of these have a display. This one also has a throttle. A lot of times you'd have a throttle. Uh, you got a battery, of course, down in the deck in that and down in this tube on this particular bike. And you have a motor in the middle of this bike on the rear wheel of that scooter. Um, so you have parts that are separated and the part that you don't see that's really the key of the matter is the controller. That's what's telling the battery what to put out to the motor. So that electrical kind of heart of the matter is really uh, where the most problems happen with water. And really, the, that's, that's really the piece you'd really like to see the most rating on. Hopefully, the other thing you can also see between the bike and the scooter is a lot more of the scooter's battery. <laughs> so you got your battery, controller, and motor all down here in close contact with the ground. Uh, the bike's a little different situation. Most of the time, your, your controller is either mounted up here. In this case, it's in, in with the motor down here. Um, you have the battery here, so these things are more off the ground. Um, even with a hub motor bike, you still have the, you know, the, dis the hub motor comparison here to down there. You know, you're off of the ground more, you're away from more of the splashing. So a bike is really a little less sensitive to uh, water resistance or needing water resistance uh, than a scooter, in, in my opinion. Pieces that you would need to worry about water protection or ingress protection from water and dust are really the electronics of this because the, the non-electronics are still a bike, right? So they are still exposed. The drivetrain, the brakes, all that stuff are still exposed. So you can see how uh, IP rating of IP65, which this bike has, so that it mean to be dust proof under vacuum, and then it can uh, withstand water jets at one minute per cubic meter of, I assume, the device at 30 kilopascals at three meters away. So it's a pressure jet time rated setup. So everything, so the, keep in mind the, the IP ratings are often as they get higher over time because it's trying to withstand water. So the IP65 rating doesn't make any sense. And I would say, uh, Big Ursa. This thing is boasting IP68, top of the potential rating system ratings. Though they're doing it in the way that actually makes sense with a separate rating IP55 on the motor, IP68 IP on the sealed removable battery, and then I think it's an IP67 up on the display on the handlebars. So they're doing that's the right way you're supposed to do it. Now, and, they, and they're, the warranty is there to back it up. So that's really what you need. If you're looking for waterproof, find the IP ratings that are actually make sense how they're applied to the product, and then the warranty to back it up. That is the secret. So here on the other side, I want to show you the Inicum Light 2 in a Home Depot bucket. So it is IPX4 rated, which that means no dust rating, and it has a 4 of water resistance, which is 10 minutes spraying water from any direction for 10 minutes. The one thing I want you to take for that, right now it's raining outside. If I was to take it right, I'd be doing this for more than 10 minutes. There's too many disconnected pieces in bikes and scooters to, even if the individual components have that rating, you still might get water in other places that are really not part of the rating of your device. And that just compromises the, the whole of the product that you paid a lot of money for. I want to show you a couple cheap and easy ways to get your bike or scooter to, to be a little bit, perform a little bit above its IP rating. My approach is a little different uh, for bikes and scooters based on the stuff I said previously in the video. Uh, silicone caulk 
and I prefer these little squeezy tubes. Just a lot easier to handle than a caulking gun. Sandwich baggie and plastic wrap. Real simple stuff. I like cheap solutions. For the displays and throttles, that's what I have the sandwich baggie for. Really simple. I'm just throwing it right over the, the display there. Nothing, nothing exciting about that. Um, on the bike, you might have to do a little differently. Um, just kind of really depends on how you're, what you got going on in the handlebar and that kind of stuff. So I'm showing you in close here a little bit of the stuff I pay attention to on a scooter because everything is basically in the deck aside from the display I just put the baggie on. Uh, the places to worry about water are really deck related. Now you can see on this particular Inukum scooter, um, you got a you know, full on hole right there. Your charge ports right there. And a lot of what you're looking for in my mind is a lot of scooters are actually using just plastic on metal connections. There's not usually gaskets. I doubt that there's a gasket under this. There's bolts right here on the bottom, so you could take those bolts out, move this out a little bit, and put a small bead of caulking right around the edges. I recommend having a paper towel real handy. That way you can make it look clean and real nice after you do it. You can also see on this scooter, hopefully you can see there, there's like full on just holes in the bottom of the deck. So, you know, if you're going to really go through, you kind of either have to do it all or not do it. Um, and, you know, the other downside of caulking is it does tend to collect some dust and dirt. So it could actually make your scooter not look quite as nice. But, you know, if you really need the water protection, that's, of course, paramount. Do a little caulking there. Um, I would look in, after I do that, I would look to see if this is, this hole is actually just in the side of the scooter and see because I don't really want to caulk this big old hole with a cable going in there that's probably not going to work out very well. The motors are almost always well sealed. You can actually see the caulking right there. And with the drum brakes, you can't really do anything about the brakes. So, you know, you can't really, there's nothing you can do with caulking that's really going to help you out back there. I don't really advise doing the caulking on bikes unless it's just a couple spots. You know, sometimes on the down tube, there could be a spot where you might want to put in some caulking. But I don't really feel like it, it's that helpful. You could go around the motor casing potentially. It's the same way on the bikes. You're really, most of them are having like plastic to metal connections. And so it's not really very weather sealed, honestly. So you're really hoping that the internal parts have a better seal on them around the controller, around the battery, that kind of stuff, waterproof connections versus water like getting into one part of the system. All right. My last secret weapon here is some plastic wrap. Uh, this is just regular Glad wrap. Uh, it's a holiday one, it's green. Uh, press and seal might even be a better way to go because you could actually press it around things. Um, I don't currently have any, but I know some people really swear by that stuff. The thing I like about the plastic wrap method is you can do it when you need water protection. You know, a lot of times if you're doing caulking, you're filling these holes. So those holes could be there for a purpose for letting like stuff drain out. Um, so you have to make sure that you're either doing it completely or doing something that you can take off on and on when you need rain protection and when you don't. So what I'm simply going to do with the plastic wrap is my biggest concern on this bike would actually be the seam between the battery and the down tube here on the bike. All right, this isn't gonna be the best in the world right now because uh, I got my bottle cage on here. So if I was really gonna do this, if I was really, oh man, that bird was loud. Um, if I was really worried about this for water protection in the winter time, I just, I would just take this water bottle off uh, for a little bit. I think there's some uh, neoprene sleeves that are sort of like the Velcro chainstay protectors that could be a good option. Um, the other thing I like about this kind of very low tech is you're not likely going to increase temperatures or anything like that. So, I mean, we're not doing anything fancy here. It's not going to look just great. So pretty? No. Effective? Yes. <laughs> and for benefit, I actually went over on this particular bike, I went over the charge port. So that just allows me, you know, another, a little bit more comfort. So I've ridden this in like wet roads with the nice full coverage fenders. But I think this, just something like this, that, and now the, the best part about this is like I said, 
is I can just, after I'm done writing in the rain, I can just remove this. And, you know, I know it's disposable and all, but depending on where you live, you might not have to do this very often. And I think, that's be I think that might be better than a necessarily a permanent solution with caulking. I hope this video about IP ratings and how they apply and how waterproof your bike or scooter may or may not be was helpful. Leave a comment. It's good to see you. Please subscribe. Have a good day.